Thank you. Thank you very much once again. Let me take this opportunity to welcome you back at this meristocratic channel of ours. And this is Metric Plus Nate Specialist. Ensure that you are hitting the subscription button and ensure that you are sharing to those who are concerned. Uh, today we are going to look at geography grade 11. And then this is the privileges of looking for those that have written uh, the test series in September. And for those that they are still going to write, I am saying to you, you are in the right platform. And then we are going to look at typical of the one of the question papers, uh, which you would find basically on development geography. And then let us check uh, what was the question which was answered in this question paper. And then let us ensure that we are all examination that we are going to write. And then this is the scale that we are going to use also uh, just to, to determine how many uh, marks have you got without wasting any time. And then we're going to check question one, which is section eight, the letter of the question 1.1. 1 .1, uh, it can be A. And then instinct it says the international uh, trade growth is most visible in. Remember that we've taken uh, we've talked about on our content coverage, the international trade. We have said when two countries they trade. So in this instinct, we are going to understand that. And when these two uh, countries trade, there will also be a foreign exchange, which is grow which is great for the growth and the development. So we are saying whereby they trade uh, resources uh, which they have to the say people they in most of their assets. It is uh, created in South Africa to ensure that there is a food, the final product, the instance farming. And then when we are talking about the substance farming, we are saying that uh, you are farming a uh, for your own a uh, pocket. We move again to one point three. You would see that we've got uh, the question there, and it says a uh, uh, pro testers all over the world, especially the anti American sentiment peaks. We must understand that something that is global is something that is happening around the world. And then we are saying that uh, this uh, is the KFC, the Coca Cola, McDonald's, the Reebok. All of them would be the correct because of they are protesting all around the world, and we find these labels all over in the world. And then in 1.4, you'd see that. Uh, we are asked a, a question, which type of uh, the business? So the word business, you must understand that uh, we are having many types of the business in this economy. And then it's least likely to find necessary to enter the international markets in order to survive. One key concept that we should understand is the international markets. So we are saying that is not happening only in a... And then we are saying that the answer is number D, the small or the local uh, businesses. If ever we are moving on again, we have to see that in question A, 1.5, we are asked to say in an A dash, the economy manufacturing accounts for 10 to 20 percent of the country. And then let us see the statement is recurring on. And then we've got to understand of the count of the economy. This type of uh, economy typically has a new rich class and a small but growing middle class, both demanding new important goods. We are talking about the raw materials exporting. So when we are exporting something, it is when we are taking it out of the country so that would be able to develop our economy better. And then if ever we are moving on again in 1.6, we are seeing all of the following obstacles. They lead to the less economic developed uh, country. And then in this instinct, except number E, the low population. If ever we are moving on again in 1.7, the less economic developed country often have a competitive advantage in the production of. So we are saying the key word there, we know that uh, the less economic developed country, they are often countries that they cannot sustain and survive. And then we are saying in this instinct, one thing we must understand that they've got the competitive or the comparative uh, advantage. So we are saying that uh, in the production, because of likely they have what we call primary products. So we are, they deal mostly with primary services that they can, okay, then you are allocated to get your mark. And then if ever we are moving on again, we have to see that we move to 1.8. And then in this instinct, we must understand that uh, the Southern Hemisphere Ocean, it is a road between the uh, Southern continents. They carry little traffic. Which one of the following explains this? So we are saying that is number E. Because of uh, the southern continents trade their primary products for manufactured goods uh, from the northern hemisphere. One thing that we need to understand is that countries that are in the northern hemisphere, they are rich and they can turn a primary product to a final one. So we are saying the southern countries like here in South Africa, 
we are rich in minerals in terms of the primary products, which will later export to the Northern Hemisphere for them to develop now a final product. One item that we can look at is American Swiss. It is their gold that they are turning into a final product, which is produced in uh, South Africa in terms of the raw material. But the final product, it is for, and again, we have to see, we go to 1.9. And then in this instinct, they are given a question, which of the following is uh, the least developed country? The word least, it means less. We are saying between this, we can see that Africa is least in terms of the development. And then in 1.10, we are saying that 90% of the uh, world's trade is carried on. Number B, the industrial countries of the Northern Hemisphere. Then you get your 20 marks. And then if ever we are moving on again, we go to question two whereby we are asked to match the columns, write the number of the question number uh, to the letter next to it. And then in 2.1, we are giving the term development. In this instinct, we are saying that this is number D, whereby we are saying this is the process of change which improves the well-being of the society. That is development. Remember, we've got a video there. Go and look at it and go and share it. And then we are saying that the standard of living. So we are saying the standard of living is number uh, F in this instinct whereby we are saying that uh, measure the quality of the services and goods available. So that one, it is a standard of living. Uh, it is too high. And then we are meaning that in 2.3, the domestic product per capita is number A, which is the total uh, income of the country per year divided by the number of people that are living in the country. So remember that this, it must be inside the country. And then we've got cost, a uh, national product is number I. We are saying that the development, which is not only meets the needs of the people today, but also in the future generation. And then we are saying that uh, we are moving on again uh, to Gini coefficient. We are saying that is number K. And then in number K, we must understand that uh, we are talking about calculating income uh, disparity. And then we talk about the human uh, development index. And then we are saying that is number B. We can even write it here, number B so that we are having it. So we are saying that uh, it includes life expectancy, how long the person is going uh, is expected to live, literacy, the years in education, and income per capita. And then let us talk about the resources number C. We are talking about those things that need to satisfy people's needs. Those are the resources. And then let us talk about uh, 2.8, the economic sector number E, and then industry. Remember that the workers, they must be allocated and distributed according to their strength and their powers. And then let us talk about the economic sector, which is a uh, number saying that uh, this now is the distribution of the workforce in the industry. And then resources number C, the things that people, they need. Okay, let us go again. Let us talk about 2.9, the quality of life, which is number H. And then in number H is the degree of the well-being felt by people in their organization or where they live. And then let us talk about the sustainability, which a development, which is number I. We are saying that the development, which is not uh, only met by people's needs today, but also in the future. Ensure that you are uh, hitting the subscription button. Then you get your 20 marks. If ever we are moving on again to one of our last question, which is, remember the uh, the study which we have uh, uh, studied before of the Brandt line. So we are saying this, it divides the now uh, southern and the northern country. So remember that we have said that uh, this, it can be the Brandt uh, line. We are saying that uh, in the northern countries, uh, they are rich, but we are having southern countries here. And then if ever we can go again, they are saying uh, about uh, what portion of the North lives in rural area. Select one of the following. So we are saying it's twelve percent because of it is uh, here given the twelve percent according to the map. Uh, state each of the following countries that are in the north or in the south. So we are given Australia. We know that is in the north. South Africa in the south. New Zealand in the north. Japan in the north, and then Mexico in the north. Then you get your marks. And then if ever we are moving on, they say describe the employment structure at 3.1 of the north. You've got to give the north a 3.1. And then if ever we are going on again, 3.2 of the south in the structure of the north and the south. So that is 3.1.1 and 3.1.2. And then let us move on again. We see uh, the answers. So we are seeing that... Uh, 
3.1.1, and the north is about 70% in the tertiary sector, 20% in the secondary sector, and 10% in the primary sector. 3.2, the south, about 30% in the tertiary, 10% in the secondary, 60% in the primary. And the reason in terms of the differences is that the north is more developed than the south, and has more far people engaged in the secondary activities because of its reach, and then in the tertiary activities. The South being less developed has the most of its own population engaged in primary economic activities. That is a uh, now 3.3, which we are giving there the difference in terms of uh, the expertise uh, there. So this is the question that we're talking about, give the differences a uh, in the employment structure of the North and the South. And then they say, study the pyramid population of the South and the North, indicate eh, the following statement that true. the North has a lower birth rate than the South is true. Why are we saying that? Let us refer back eh, to our sketch. And then we see the sketch. So this is what we are talking about. The Northern side, they have less population. You can see they will be living in this region. But the South and South have got many population that are here. So that is why we are saying that. And then if ever we are moving again, and let us understand this uh, key concept uh, first before we can uh, be done with the chapter. Okay. And then this is I've said in 3.3, the North is more developed than the South. Remember those Southern countries, they are really more engaged in the secondary activity. We have seen and in the tertiary activity there and the south is less developed with most population engaged in primary economic activity so let us go there to the structure so that we see so you can see that uh, here in the southern hemisphere people they are many in the primary and then secondary is less and tertiary is less but now at this one a northern hemisphere population at the primary less in the secondary less but more on the secondary activity all right i hope we understood that that in 3.4.1 the north has a lower birth rate than the south it is true and then we are saying 3.4.2 and the south has a smaller percentage of elderly people than the north it is true it's a pyramid that is false that is according to Again, this track, this is the structure on the north. You can see elderly people, they are also there. And then, but here we are seeing elderly people in less developed countries, they are even less. Let us ensure that we understand this concept. Thank you very much for your time and ensure that you are tuning on for more. Admetric plus needed specialist. Thank you very much.